everybody. <laughs> it's good to be here with you. We wanted to share an update with you on our mission base. At this point in time, September 2022, we thought we were going to be in our base. Um, however, there have been a few twists and turns and we're not yet. So we wanted to give you an update of where things are at and what actually is going on at the moment. Yeah, so uh, way back at the beginning of the year, um, I did quite a big series in our church on suffering. And within that, one of the key things I talked about was the sovereignty of God, which is something I don't know how you feel about the sort of will of God uh, and how he always gets what he wants. And uh, many times we don't understand it. Um, and it makes no sense. And we've very much then experienced a season of that. So like Catherine said, we were hoping this video would be one in the mission base. We're getting stuff renovated and yet we find ourselves in a very different place. So going back to 18th of May, uh, sadly uh, Catherine's mum went to be with Jesus. Um, it had been something that um, in a sense had been expected. She'd been very ill this year. Um, and Catherine got to spend lots of time with her. But of course that was really raw and for both of us we'd not experienced before losing one of our parents. So Catherine had, uh, was away and the next day, um, uh, home alone, I get a letter through the door. And um, unfortunately I've had this thing for years where I have great hope when I have a letter. I'm not too sure what it is. I always think, no way, is this some like provision from God? And I always have this like, little thing in it. So I open the letter to find it's the complete opposite to find out actually our seller had withdrawn from the sale of what we had believed was our miracle, uh, was our mission base. And I felt absolutely winded. I remember sitting down on the stairs near our front door and just, you know, you know, we get, draw a blank. I did not know what to say, what to think, what to, who to contact. I was aware Catherine was away. I hadn't seen her since her mum had passed. How's she gonna be? Where, where's she at? The, the sense of sheer unbelief uh, in terms of what happened and distress, uh, what we believe was a God thing. You know, what do you do? And I know that day I faced into shame and blame and pain. And that's what happens when stuff goes wrong. Shame, I, I'm embarrassed. I mean, we put these videos out, you know, people outside of our church or even people we haven't met have watched this stuff and been inspired and we thought God was doing something amazing. And it hasn't happened. Uh, blame. I mean, I can get angry at the seller or angry at myself for maybe feeling like I've been taken along by something or for both of us. And just in the end, the pain, the pain that we're outside the garden, the pain that stuff goes wrong, the pain that our dreams collapse. And I remember that night having to just take a stark uh, decision to trust. And I actually stuck some music on and danced, probably not very well, with tears streaming down my face. Because I had to make a decision in the end of, am I just going to put my trust in God? Or am I going to go down this road I knew was going to be one of uh, a difficulty, which is starting to go, why God, or what this, and explain this, or all those sort of things. I don't know how it was for you, my wife. Mm. It's been, obviously, really sad and heartbreaking losing my mum. We'd only known that she was really ill for a few months, and so that was really tough, and it was kind of, so it was hard to feel emotions about so many different things all at once and um, yeah just trying to process that in the last few months what does this mean that what we thought was a door God was opening for a mission base seemed to suddenly be not and what that felt like what what was that all about and asking God about is this something did we not hear you and all of these questions that we have and one day I was just pondering about the waste you know if we wasted energy and time and effort and money already on that property um, and I just felt like just a sense of it's not nothing's wasted with God he's not worried about money and uh, how, how much we might think is wasted because he's all about our hearts and he's all about looking at our hearts and the journey for us in that um, and so I think you know we can easily find our source of joy our source of energy and refreshment in many different things other than God and we can even find it in a good thing like trying to get a mission base and when we get the mission base it's going to be really great but you know the challenge is that we want to live as Jesus as our source of joy he's our source he's our prize he's everything and getting a mission base or not in some ways is immaterial because it's him that we're after um, he's our provision he's our provider 
his unfailing love and faithfulness will see us through and the promises that we have in the Bible from God are just outstanding and so those are the things that we choose to stand on and we choose to be in even though we don't understand what is going on, haven't a clue, um, we're trusting you God, that's yeah. our heart's cry. Yeah so that was the thing for us was we felt like we were in the unfolding plan of God right in his grip, he was doing an amazing miracle in our lives and suddenly it's not uh, and suddenly you feel dropped and suddenly there's nothing and I know the song Oceans has meant a lot to a lot of people for some years now and that sense of being out beyond the shore out in the sea of waves out where you know you've got nothing else around you at times that can be exciting I think for us for those weeks after that and especially as we wanted, really wanted to honour Catherine's mum and not let that in the way you're just in the place where you've got to hold on to is God that's it all I've got is trust in him and I didn't feel necessarily like maybe he was trustworthy like my emotions were all over the place nothing made any sense it felt like we were being let down by God and yet it's in those moments where in the end you've got to choose to trust or not scripture says though you slay me I will trust in you that's how much I believe how much I love, how much I am fixed on going after him. We were able to meet with the seller, which was great and just, although very painful, we were able to pray together and just let go and just let go of that whole thing and, you know, all those bits of ideas come in your head, well, we could try this or what about that or what about this and all those things or why and we just felt, no, we just had to let go and so we did. Uh, for several weeks not knowing what was going to happen other than we're going to have to leave our home and that our dream which we had held since we walked in a, on a beach in Mozambique back in 2011 and has specifically pursued since 2020 uh, now two properties had, had been right there in touching distance and had been taken from us we didn't know what to do and we we're just trusting in God but then my mum and dad out of the blue hadn't asked them suddenly approached us and said, hey, what about buying something with us? So, here's my mum and dad. So, here's my dad and my mum. Great uh, Everyone has parents of some description, but not everybody has spiritual parents. Uh, I've been very, very fortunate in my life that my actual parents are also my spiritual parents and have been a massive part of my God journey and continue to be. So, it's amazing to be here with you both. Thank you. And uh, Ken and Heather, by the way. And just share a little bit of your heart. Why well, I know if you want to move in with us again. That's a good question. Home. It's a good question. I, I came out after Jesus in 1969, but I would say my, my life uh, really took off in terms of, of God stuff in 1972, uh, about three o'clock in the morning, and we were in somebody's house Come on. Uh, in North London, and we got baptised in the Holy Spirit. I might get a bit weepy, actually. The following afternoon was a Sunday afternoon and about 20, 25 young people were in our upstairs flat in uh, Palmer's Green and they all got filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember the first time somebody spoke in tongues in our house, it was Leslie Light who brought a message in tongues, we, it, was in, it was in our house and uh, it just feels like from, from the early days of, of knowing something and moving in the Spirit, the house has seemed to be a, a place where God loves to show up and we're kind of in a really natural way, not because you've called a meeting or we've decided to do this, but God just loves to show up. And so that's why we're kind of interested and excited about what's going on here. Um, in terms of, of uh, discerning the will of God, I have heard people who are always saying, God told me this and God told me that. And I, I used to get quite intimidated by that, but I've got over it. Because um, I'm not sure I would very often say God told me to do things, but through my life and through our life together, Stuff has just happened. Things have come together. People have asked questions, made comments, made suggestions, and somehow things have seemed to kind of dovetail together. Um, we ended up living in Jamaica and because a guy called Pete Butt said, do you fancy going to Jamaica? I thought, yeah, sounds all right. And, and, and I ended up as head of the King's Primary School because somebody was standing on the terraces of Southampton football ground and said to the person next to them, what's Ken Ford doing? He said, I have no idea. Why don't you give him a ring? And, and those sort of things seem to be a way that God opens things up. And so uh, Heather will just show a little bit about what's happened over these last few months. And it just feels exciting to think about this idea of the house as a, a place where God loves to manifest himself, 
not just in having a, a nice home and a nice family together, I don't worry, I'm just fighting that, uh, but actually showing up and doing stuff among people. Heather, tell us a bit about what's happened, how oh, it's progressed. How it's progressed, what was the whole <coughs> move, you mean? Yeah. But it's interesting because it's only taken a month, well, less than a month, for us to uh, see a house that seemed to have more potential because you realise that Matt and Catherine were, were let down by um, the house that they were hoping to have as a mission base. And um, I saw one for sale and mentioned it, and at the time thought that Matt and Catherine might have wanted to buy it, but it was pretty high price. Um, and just as the journey went along, we um, began to talk a bit about um, living together scary really but um, more and more we thought about it and we were able to, to work out a little bit of a plan so we'll just take you through July the 8th we viewed a house together on the 11th of July um, we put an offer in on it um, July the 12th we then put our house on the market and by August the 4th um, someone put an offer in on our house and um, were sold subject to contract, which was amazing, yeah. within less than a month. Um, and there's a chain in place behind this person that bought ours because another house that they'd gone for had fallen through. So all of these things have come together, a bit like Ken was saying, how things tend to do that. And um, so, you know, we're putting money into it and Catherine and, um, and Matt are putting money into that. We're living on different sides of the house. Uh -huh. We're not putting up well a barrier. Sorry. There's not the Berlin Wall in between. We have a door that we can go through. Um, and uh, we may have slightly different views of exactly how it'll all work out. And I know for me at the moment it's more about getting that house up together because a lot of work will need doing mm. and uh, that's something on my mind. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so it may be quite a while until we're actually there. So. It's worth just saying as well, uh, in terms of other circumstances, you know, Heather had an operation early in the year, which took a, a longer than expected to recover, and she got over it, that was great, and then mm. she broke her ankle in two places, um, which again is taking quite a long time, and, and that, together with just a sense that we're not getting younger, uh, and the place we go, we, we love it, where we live, we've got a beautiful garden, but it's quite hard work. And so that circumstance, again, together with Matt and Catherine's situation, having to move out of the flat, again, just circumstantially, just feels a bit like God. Yeah, come on. Yeah, and just to say three things quickly off of that, um, uh, I was really moved by how Catherine loved her mum um, through the last season. And I was challenged as well because, you know, uh, mum and dad had moved to Highworth and we saw each other quite a lot. We've both got a heart for church and passion for that, and, and, and my mum and dad have given up decades to, to serve. And I think through COVID and everything else as well, our relationship never got strained or anything, but it sort of got a bit functional. And I felt really challenged about the commandment to honour your parents, and I just see this as a way of being able to love you, mm -hmm. and be there with you, and look after you. So I think that's the first thing. Um, I think secondly, I mean, we're just really excited about the fact that whilst we never dreamed of this, Catherine and I, we never asked my mum and dad this, because um, we, I think we've never felt like it was something we could ask, it had to be offered, but actually having an expression of multi-generational faith, um, you know, that with our three children as well, um, three generations of believing, uh, of being filled with the Spirit, that's exciting, we're just excited about the root of that mm -hmm. uh, and I think in terms of us together um, uh, uh, providing a platform for mum and dad in their next season of life shall we say the prime and think, season there, prime. you know the bible is incredibly challenging about old age no one likes in our society saying you're old the bible loves it because yeah. it says you're closer to your destiny you're walking in all the wisdom and all the history that you've had with Jesus and so we're excited about hopefully making your lives a bit easier so that they can do more for Jesus and, and, and do more out of their heart, but out of a place of freedom and life. And so I don't know if Catherine, you could just finish by just sharing what's next and how people can be praying for us. Okay, so we are hoping to complete on the property that we're buying maybe November is kind of our hope. And we put planning application in. The property's already got five bedrooms 
um, but we're needing to do some renovations and extensions so that we've got a really nice um, place for Ken and Heather really, to really live. Nice. <laughs> um, really, really nice. And the right amount of space that we need for the, for the sense of community and everything that we're wanting to express there. So it, it's purpose built, really. Um, it, even if we weren't extending, the property needs a lot of work and renovation because it's, it's a bit tired. And so that's going to be probably quite a few months before we're able to actually properly move in there. So if you can be praying for um, God's, God to give us grace for every day and every step of the way yeah, um, and yeah. the provision that we need um, for where we're going to live in the meantime. The flat that Matt and I and the children are in at the moment, we will probably have to move out of possibly again in November. So just for God to provide the right place for us to stay and to be while we're doing up the other property. Um, and for everything that is needed and his timing and for us to just stay yeah. in trust with him. Yeah. And I started by talking about the sovereignty of God and you have to trust that your set of circumstances um, God can work through and God can move through. And um, so over the next few months, my mum and dad are selling their house probably at the end of October. They need to move somewhere temporarily for a few months while this gets done. Like Catherine said, we're, we, we're getting forced out of our, our home because they're um, going to make change it into three flats. So we've got to find somewhere else. We've got to get a builder. We've got to try decorating all that stuff. Um, and then it's come at a time where Catherine and I have got a sabbatical, which starts um, uh, at the end of September, beginning of October. Um, and of course, sabbatical is about rest uh, and about getting refreshed uh, and renewed. And it doesn't look like that on paper at all. And I can just think, God, what are you doing? We're trusting that this is the best sabbatical we can possibly have, that God has set traps of his love and grace and goodness and kindness that he's going to speak to us, that through this we'll have greater faith. So we really appreciate your prayers. And my mum's going to read some of the Bible. Wow. Psalm 27. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around about me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, yep. be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yea, wait for the Lord. So bless you guys. And you never know, we might actually get somewhere, <laughs> finally. Uh, and be able to uh, run after God and express all that's in our heart and his heart to do. So, blessings. God bless you.